by Rule is a video distribution platform. We focus on desktop, tablet, and mobile uh, in order to be able to serve video inventory for our clients. What's the sweet spot in your business model for your clients? Uh, our sweet spot is the fact that the majority of video distribution platforms, the majority of places where video is seen is pre-rolls. That's the vast majority of where video is distributed. Yet pre-rolls are going the way of banners in the sense that they're becoming less and less effective. The brand lift that you see off of those are not very high. Uh, people are just annoyed, irritated, they just want to skip them, right? And so how do you distribute video content in a way so that people are actually willing to watch it, aren't being forced to watch it, but have the option and the choice to watch it, and then the onus is on us as the distribution platform and on the brand as, the, as a creative to be able to find the right type of content, the right person, the right individual to see that content so that they actually do engage with it. Now let's drill down even further. We know that um, we're pretty familiar with the behavior model of uh, millennials, and now we're learning about Generation Z. Mm -hmm. Talk about specifically what you're doing in your platform with your business, targeting the mobile audience, and even more specifically, the more elusive audience, which is millennials and Generation Z. Tell us how you deliver the performance to your clients for that. Sure, so ultimately, uh, the, the philosophy that I like to use is, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beer holder, right? In the sense that you, there's an audience for every type of content, but not every type of content is for all audiences. And so, you know, if you take an example of, of work that we did with Under Armour, we worked with Under Armour on a, they released a brand new shoe for Steph Curry, right? And this, they had this awesome video talking about how Steph works harder than everyone and a you know, really good piece of content. That sort of content is going to be really engaging to the millennial audience because Steph Curry is an awesome basketball player that everybody's talking about because the Warriors are in the NBA Finals. That is going to be a really engaging piece of content because the way that we distributed it, you know, the sound was loud and the, and the screen was large and it was set to play on articles where people are talking about basketball already. So if you're reading an article talking about how the Warriors are playing the Cavs tonight um, and how it's a big game and Steph Curry just had a really bad performance but will he bounce back and and in the middle of the article the video player pops up and you see a video featuring Steph Curry, the odds that you're going to sit there and watch that are incredibly higher than the odds that if you just got served that on a pre-roll somewhere. Um, so what we're focused on, the targeting piece, the contextual relevance piece, and ultimately creating a user experience that makes the person feel like the ad that they're seeing is actually enhancing the content that they're reading and isn't some interruptive, disjointed, um, skippable thing that they're just hoping to try and get away. All of our inventory, you can just scroll right past and you don't have to watch a second of it. Um, and we address viewability as well for our clients because what we do with our video player is that if you scroll past, even halfway past the player on the screen, um, and at least 50% of the pixels are not in view, it won't play. So there's no concern of it being like a one by one dot somewhere that's playing that you have no you have no control over. There's no concern over the the fact that the person just you know scrolled past and it's playing on its own and you're being charged for it. We only charge on viewable inventory because our inventory only plays when it's in view. Do you feel like because there's been um a, a significant success, not only with brands, but more importantly, consumers on Facebook and this autoplay without sound, that it's trained the, the digitally savage consumer that so when they see it outside of Facebook, it doesn't seem foreign to them? Is that a fair assumption? That, that's, that's the assumption that we're banking on, right? Is that ultimately what the, the Facebook autoplay model solves three problems at once. The first thing is it gives the choice back to the viewer. You don't have to sit there and watch it or wait for a timer to run down or whatever the case is, right? You have the choice to keep scrolling. So it empowers the user. The second thing it does is it, is it allows for discovery of content in the most non-interruptive way possible. Ultimately, people want to consume content, right? It's funny to say it this way, but like, you know, if you think about ads that you love, like the Dollar Shave Club ad, right? Who hasn't seen that ad and laughed and thought, wow, what a great piece of advertising. 
who hasn't seen the Dos Equis most interesting man in the world commercials and thought, well, these are really funny, right? Right. And so you find you find yourself in a situation where where content discovery is important, but you want to discover the right content in a way that isn't being forced down your throat. So it allows you to discover content seamlessly, allows you to to make the choice. And the third thing it allows you to do is if you do want to engage with it, just one click away, right? You're just one click away from the full interactive experience, sound on. We can put little ribbons at the bottom so that you can share the content with one click onto Facebook, onto Twitter, onto Pinterest, etc. So we're basically driving the social activation piece because for the millennial audience, as you were asking earlier, what do they want to do? If I like something, I want people to I want people to know that I found it, and I want to share it in some like selfish manner, right? Like in this, like as if there's a social quota that I hit by finding something really funny, putting it on Facebook, and watching my likes and comments go up, right? I mean, this is the way millennials think, and so by allowing millennials to seamlessly and quickly share content that they find to be valuable, we're both empowering the individual to be a brand ambassador for the content, uh, for the advertiser themselves, as well as to earn their own kind of social quota and social points in a very seamless manner.